morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, if anyone else is feeling like they are in a time warp as we are in that weird week between Christmas, New Year's, into the first of the year, like it's such a weird time of year, um, but we are here. We made it. So I'm so happy that you're here. Good morning, Sadie. Good morning, good morning. I have so much to share with you guys this morning. But before I do, I want to make sure I share this video into my free Facebook group, Millennial Business Babes Unfiltered. And if you are not there yet and you own a business and you like to talk about these types of topics, come join us over there. So good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you feeling today? How are you? Happy New Year. Happy 2019. I hope you have your coffee. I have so much to share this morning. Hi, Nashira. Hello, hello. Good morning. And Christy and Angie and Michelle and Ashley and Jesse are here with us. Hello, hello. So good to see you guys this morning. It is so rainy and gloomy here in Texas this morning. It's such a gloomy morning. So I decided to get ready a little bit, pour some coffee, get ready to come live with you guys. Good morning, Greta. Yay, yay, yay. Hi, Melissa, Danielle, Faith, Kara. Good morning. How is everyone doing? Let me know in the comments. How are you today? How are you feeling? What's going through you? Have you picked a word for the year? Have you done your intention setting? Oh my God, it's a new year, right? I did some journaling this morning, got super clear about celebrations from 2018. What were my wins? What am I so proud of? What did I learn? Um, also did a lot of journaling around what I left in 2018. Some of those really difficult things that 2018 taught me that I'm leaving in 2018. Um, you know, things like playing small and not valuing yourself and apologizing for everything, you know, whatever those things are that held you back and that you learned you're actually better than that, right? I wrote a lot of journaling around that. You can burn it if you would like to do a fun release ritual there. Um, and then it's all about getting clear going into the new year. So before I get started, I'm going to say, write your intentions. You have the rest of the week, the rest of the day, the rest of the month. You have any given moment at any given day, you can change your life. You can decide to show up differently. You can decide, decide to do things differently. So don't let the pressure of like, well, January 1st is over. It's January 2nd. Fuck it to hell. Like I, I messed up again. Next year's my year. 2020 is my year. 2019 can still be your year, so don't be too hard on yourself, okay? I just see a lot going around online, and um, I know for me, I can tend to feel overwhelmed as a type A, as a perfectionist. I'm like, I need to have everything in place. I need to have everything perfect. Everything needs to be good to go, and if it's not, then screw it. Oh, well, I guess I'll start next year, you know, and it can feel very daunting, and it shouldn't be. It should be a fun, exciting time of year. So hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nishira says, energize. Nashira, oh, I'm sorry, Nashira, Nashira, such a beautiful name. Energized this morning, feeling good this morning. I love it. So let's dive into the seven lessons, okay? So I wanted to share with you guys this morning as you're continuing to hop on, just popping in to say hi, hi, I love you, okay, bye, love you, Autumn. So good to see you, my best friend. Okay, so as you're hopping on, please continue to, to comment in the comments below. Um, it's so much more fun when we're having a conversation about this, and I'm not just talking at the computer, right? So super fun to be able to actually have a really juicy conversation around this. So I want to talk about today. So if anyone saw yesterday, Joe and I celebrated seven years of marriage. I can't even freaking believe it. We got married seven years ago. We've been together for on and off at the beginning, um, 11 years. We were young and dumb and, um, you know, dated other people, did our thing and then came back together. And it's been amazing. We've had a lot of growing, a lot of lessons learned, a lot of things that we've had to fight through, a lot of things we've had to work through. So I don't ever want anyone to look at us and think that we're perfect. We are not perfect. And so I asked him yesterday, I was like, listen, I want to share with my audience, I want to share with my people, what do we feel like have been the biggest key pieces that have helped us continue to grow every single year that have continued to allow us to get better and better and better and grow closer and closer and closer, get stronger and stronger and stronger. What are the key pieces? So we really, I mean, he's still in, he's still overseas. So we weren't able to like do this in person, but we were able to sit down and really figure out, okay, what are the key pieces that have helped us get to where we are? What do we feel like are some of the biggest lessons that we've learned that, I'm sorry, but a lot of people these days, and, and again, I will always say like divorce is warranted in, in situations and I always honor you doing what's best for you. So if you have been through divorce, if you've been through breakups, you do you like be happy, whatever you have to do to be whole and complete and happy on your own. That's what you need to do. And I fully support that. But I see a lot is just 
things and, and, and people just quitting or people walking away or people changing their minds or people saying, well, that's just how it goes. Like we just don't get to have sex anymore and we're just going to have a shitty relationship and it's fine and we're not going to communicate and it's fine. And like there's, there's this disconnect. So again, divorce is warranted a lot of the time. Totally cool. Like I support you. I root for you. Like you do you. But for Joe and I, we were so committed from day one that we're like, what is it that is causing so many people to walk away and so many people to dissolve relationships and we continue to actually get better and better and better every single year, right? And we haven't gone through that and we have gone through hard times. So um, I wanted to share the seven lessons and we came up with them together. So there's a little of the feminine point of view, a little more of the masculine point of view um, and you can share it. So if you do have a partner, a spouse, I would love if you guys could watch this together again, or maybe you take notes and you share it with them um, and just a, it'll open up a conversation around, you know what, what if we shift the paradigm and we don't say, well, everything's just going to go to shit. Eventually we've been married forever. We've, you know, we've had sex. It's fine. Like whatever, this is just how it goes. We're going to have the seven year itch. Things are going to get bad. What if we shift the paradigm and say, actually things can get better and better and better and better and better every single freaking year. Like how freaking rad would that be? And you get to decide that you get to choose that you will go through hard times. Yes. That uncomfortability is where our growth happens. It's in those moments that we're able to shine a light and illuminate something and tweak it and actually grow from it. So those are needed. Those are going to continue to happen. But being that we're both so committed to the growth of this relationship and so committed to the vision that we have for it, we haven't had to quit, you know, again, certain situations weren't that. And I totally respect that. I'm not here to tell you what to do about your relationship. So, so, so personal, but Catherine says, yay, good morning, babe. So happy to see you live. Yay, me too. I'm so happy that you're here. Liv, yay. So good to see you. Cindy, good morning, good morning. Andrea, thank you. It, You know what? So I got my hair done. I'm going to go into the seven lessons, I promise, but I have to catch up on these comments. Um, I got my hair done. And you know how they, when they do it in the salon, they don't ever do it right. And maybe it's because I'm a previous hairstylist. So I'm like super picky, but they always make it really soft and really shiny and really like limp and I love like big messy textured crazy hair so um I'm washing it tomorrow finally thank god but I've had to like kind of tweak it then based on what I how I normally style my hair so in case you know I had to just share that with you but um let's see Greta says Liv thank you thank you thank you bombshell Greta says headed into work so excited to listen to this later yay I can't wait for you to listen let me know what your thoughts are let me know if you have questions Claire I love this I love you so happy that you're here Okay, so lesson number one, okay, I've got notes. Lesson number one that we have learned in our seven years of marriage, okay? Lesson one is that we are both committed to our own growth, our own purpose, our own mission, our own passions. We are both so committed to growing, growing, growing on our own, no matter what. There was a year that Joe got out of the military, if you guys don't know my story. So Joe and I got married. He got in the military right away. We were in for five years. We got out for a year. Now we've been back in for about a year and a half. Um, and that year that we were not in was one of the most difficult years of our lives because he was miserable. He was miserable every single day. Every single day he was miserable. He was trying to find purpose and passion, and he was trying to appease me because my, my dream was always – Let's get out of the military. Let's have a normal life. That's what I want, whatever that means. But at the time, I wanted a normal life, so he got out for me. And I was committed to my mission. My goal as an entrepreneur was always to bring my husband home. I want to bring him home. And he was miserable when I brought him home. Miserable. And it destroyed us that year. We, it was one of the most difficult years of our lives. Our communication was off. We weren't having sex. We weren't connecting. We didn't really talk much about anything. We weren't able to have um, this intimacy together because we were so off. And it's because he wasn't fulfilled in his own self. He wasn't fulfilled in his own growth. He wasn't doing anything to further his purpose, his passion, his mission. He was just trying to support me and mine, but he was compromising everything. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like, I finally have everything I've ever wanted, but he was falling apart personally. And he didn't talk about it because not always guys don't necessarily talk about it um, the same way that we talk about it and I would try to talk to him about it. And I was like, babe, like, I just want to like, let's get, let's grow together. Let's go, like, let's get better. Let's go to therapy. Let's go to these things. And he was, he's just like, I'm just working through it on my own. Like I, it's, it's internal. And I'm like, well, I'm a coach, babe. Like, come on, like I can help you through this. And he was like, nope, like I, it, I don't need you to be my coach right now. I just need you to let me figure this out for myself. 
And it wasn't until I sat down one night and I literally said, if it didn't matter what anybody else thought, it didn't matter what anybody else wanted, you couldn't let anybody down, you didn't have to disappoint anybody, what would you do? What do you feel called to do? And he was like, I would rejoin the military. And I was like, okay, then we're doing it. And he's like, but that's not what you want. And I said, but the key piece here is I can't just have my own purpose and passions and, and be fulfilled there. In this partnership, you need to have your own passions and purpose and mission. And if this is what you're feeling called to do, I need to support you in that. And so for us, we're both committed to our growth. We both, you know, I am much more like the podcast books, all this realm, but he's constantly growing in his job. He's going to different schools. He's taking different classes. He's doing different things. He's getting better and better and growing as a leader within his work. And I'm doing my own thing and we're able to support each other in that fully. So when we come to the relationship, he's not trying to fill me up and I'm not trying to fill him up. We're actually both focused on our own happiness, our own growth, our own wholeness. And we're able to come and we're better together because we're both filled up separately. We're not relying on the other person to fill our needs. We're filling our own needs and we come together and we're better together. So that's number one. Number two brings me right into this. We support each other no matter what, even when it doesn't make sense. We trust each other. We might not trust the decision that one another are making, or we might be a little eerie of it, or like a little, oh, maybe not, like this is scary. Um, for example, this year I've made um, many, or this past year, I suppose now, uh, 2018 was a year for, for me of massive quantum growth in my business, and it required for me Personally, not for everybody. This is what happened for me. I had to make some really scary investments that my soul was calling me to make by hiring coaches, taking programs, doing what I wanted to do. Um, and I felt this like soul pull towards it. And it didn't make sense financially on paper. So his logical analytical brain was like, I don't fucking understand this. This is dumb. We don't have the money. Why would we do this? This is stupid. Like whatever. But he chose to support me in that because he didn't necessarily love the decision he was making, right? He didn't love the decision I was making, and he was just like, I don't really think that that makes sense, but he trusted me, and so he supported me in that. Now, it can go so far beyond investments, right? For example, when he joined the military, I didn't understand it. I was like, this is stupid. I don't want to do this. I really don't. <laughs> this is dumb. Like, why can't you just be happy working a nine to five? Why can't you be happy and go back to school and go be a doctor? Or why can't you go do this or whatever? Like, why can't we have a normal life? And I chose to support him and him going back into the military, even though it didn't make sense to me. It didn't have to make sense to me. That's what he wanted to do. Therefore, I supported him in it. Um, when I enrolled in a coaching certification for the erotic blueprint coaching that I'm doing starting this month, um, I told him, I was like, this is kind of scary. Like, should I do this? Should I not and he's like well this is what you feel called to do I support you in it and so he was able to support me in that decision so when I was talking to him and um, we were talking about the supporting each other aspect he said in regards to the supporting each other point of this lesson he said I think that empathy and compromise played into that choosing to understand why something matters to the other and choosing to support the other's feelings, not necessarily the action or the task. So he said he chose to under, like try to understand why something mattered to me. Like, oh, why does she feel called to this? Oh, it's because she's feeling called to it and I'm seeing her feelings here. I'm seeing her emotion, I'm seeing her energy here. So I'm going to choose to support her. For example, when I left network marketing, um, it didn't make sense financially. I was making really damn good money in network marketing. I, I was happy. Um, and I would say quotes because by the end I was not happy, but on the outside I was happy. And he chose to trust me and support me and believe in me even when that meant, kid you not, we went from me making between like five and $6,000 a month to me making $0 a month when I left network marketing and he was solely supporting us. Did that make sense on paper? No, but he supported me in that because I said my soul is dying slowly and I need to step out from this. I, I, I can't ignore the noise. I know that I'm destined for great things. I know that I'm meant for more and he chose to support me in that because he chose to understand my feelings. He had the empathy for me um, and he was like, I'll take care of things for now while you build things back up. And it's been an incredible growth, um, growth spurt ever since, which well, that's not the point of today's video. Number three, if you guys have any questions, please let me know below. Uh, number three, we never stop telling each other that we love each other ever, 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 every single day. He tells me that he loves me. Every single day I tell him that I love him. Um, every single day we try to say really nice things to each other. We try to compliment each other. It's the little things. Now, 
He is not a words of affirmation guy. Um, love him dearly. He's the first one to admit it. Communication is not his strong suit. He has many other strong suits. Um, and my love language is words of affirmation. If you guys have not read the book, words, uh, Five Love Languages, you need to read it. It's so freaking good. It's been a game changer for us. And the erotic blueprint in which I'm getting my coach certification is all about your love language and sex. So it's super freaking fascinating to learn about each other that way too. But for us, he knows that words of affirmation is my love language and he needs to tell me that he loves me. He can't just, in his head, he's like, well, I love you, duh, like I married you, I'm still here, like I love you. But he verbally says it because he knows that it means the world to me. So if your partner doesn't know what your love language is, if your partner doesn't know how you best respond and you're not speaking up for it, you need to. Because it will cause resentment over time if they're not giving you what you need, but that's not on them if you've never said anything. So for Joe and I, there were many times where we had to sit down over the last seven years and I would have to say, listen, I love the shit out of you, but I need you to tell me. I know that you know it. I know that you believe it. I know that it's there. And when you're here in person, it's great because like there's touch, there's intimacy, there's sex, there's different ways we can connect, different ways you can show me that you love me. But when you're gone more than your home, you have to say it. And now he says it every single day, multiple times a day. And it's just been a game changer for us because we don't just assume the other one knows what we're thinking anymore. We have the conversation about it and we remind each other daily how much we love each other. We remind each other daily what the other one means to us. We uh, remind each other daily through communication. Um, and if you guys are in person, it can be through physical touch. It can be through little things that you can do for each other, the way that you look at each other, the closeness and intimacy that you have, that you can continue to grow together that way. It's in the little teeny tiny things, not always the big extravagant things, right? Let's see here. Danielle says, former military wife, thanks for your service call. I love you so much. Thank you. I never know what to say to that. You're welcome, but I'm not going to say you're welcome because, like, I love him. So, of course, I'll do it. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, Haley, yay, 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 yay. Thank you for tagging your partner. I love that. Claire, so important and so true. I see this now in my relationship a hundred freaking percent. I love that you guys have learned that too. Angie, compromise in marriage is so hard. Lee's passions and dream job don't make sense to me, but I'm trying. Oh, a thousand percent. Um, and then I just go back to... I mean, reverse the roles. And the times that it's hard to see your partner's dreams and aspirations, reverse the role. Um, and so for me, maybe it's easier because I am an entrepreneur. And Angie, I know you are as well. So it's like our jobs don't make sense, right? Our dream jobs don't make sense as entrepreneurs. We're putting more money out sometimes than we're bringing in at first. And there's a lot of learning curve and there's a lot of growth happening here. Um, but I choose to reverse the role. So in the times where I don't understand Joe and what he wants, I reverse the role and I'm like, oh, okay, how can I love him the way that I would want to be loved? Or how can I support him in the way that I would want to be supported if the roles were reversed? And sometimes compromise is like, okay, let's give it a year of me supporting you in this. Let's give it a year and go all in. And then we can always reevaluate at the end of a year. So it's not saying forever, like you get to do your dream job forever and ever and ever. And I'm going to support you forever because that can be really daunting at first, especially if it doesn't make sense. But how about trying it out for a year and having open, honest communication throughout about how you're both feeling and what you're both needing from each other to get through that season. And that is a beautiful way to do it. When I first started network marketing, that was my very first um, taste of entrepreneurship. I don't do network marketing anymore, um, but that was almost five years ago now. When I started that for Joe and I, it was mainly about let's try it out and let's see. Uh, we spent like the last money on our credit card to buy the kit that I had to start with and we tried it and he saw like, wow, like look how different she is. Look how lit up she is. Look at how fulfilled she is. I'm going to support her moving forward in this. And then I was able, I don't want to say prove to him, but I was able to help him um, see it through my eyes, through the changes that were happening in me. It wasn't just what was happening financially, but even how I showed up differently as a person, if that helps. Claire, Simon, this is great and reassures that we're on the right track in our relationship, a great watch. Oh, I love this, Claire. I'm so happy you could tag him. Catherine, I met, uh, my husband and I have a similar relationship. It's been a process over the last four years. Jake and I have such a beautiful relationship, but it came through super copious amounts of honest communication. It's absolutely about communication and vulnerability. A thousand percent. If you're not communicating what you need, your partner does not know, does not know. It doesn't matter how much you in your head think it all makes sense. If you're not communicating it with your partner, they can't read your mind, right? So it needs to be very, very, very clear, very open, very honest, very vulnerable for you to say, 
And like, let's talk about sex for a second, right? Like when I talked to Joe about sex, it used to like make me so uncomfortable because I was like, oh, this is so weird, but he's my partner. So it took me going to him and saying like, listen, like this is so uncomfortable for me and vulnerable for me. And it makes me want to shit my pants a little bit, but I have to bring this up. I'm not happy here. I love you and I want to work through this with you. Like I I love you so much. And I see this for us being something we can learn from and we can grow in, but something about this, like, I'm just not fulfilled right now. What can we do to work through this together? Right? So it's not about, here's all the things you're doing wrong. Here's all the ways you're fucking up. Here's all the things you need to do differently. It's here's how I'm feeling. Can we come up with a solution together? Right? Ah, Shannon, I fucking miss you too. I love you so much. You're, you're the best. My other best friend. I love it. Um, so yeah, open, honest communication, vulnerability. Totally. I'm going to go to number four in just a second here. Liv said, what if your man hasn't found his purpose yet? Um, that's a hard thing. Cause I don't know if Joe ever would have said like, this is my purpose until like now, um, being almost 30, I would say, does he know that he needs a purpose? Like, is he happy? That would be my first question. Um, because a lot of times, like when Joe was working like odd jobs before and whatever, Um, I don't think he was ever thinking like, I need to find my purpose. I think that's something we all kind of get that itch. Eventually we all kind of get into this, like, Ooh, I need something more. There's more for me here, but it takes us being uncomfortable and being in this weird situation in order for us to work through that. Um, we had to have that hit of like, I need something more. And then we learned about here's my purpose. Right? So I would ask like, is he happy? Does he know he needs a purpose? Because it's not our job to go to our partner and say, I think you need to find your purpose. You can ask him questions. You know, maybe you guys are, I mean, Joe and I will be eating sushi and we'll have open, honest communication. And I, I, you have to be careful if you're a coach not to go into coach mode. Um, Do not coach your partner. They will shut you down. Joe tells me all the time, stop life coaching me, babe. I need you to stop coaching me. I'm like, okay, fine. Oh, sorry. Um, But making sure you're asking like thought provoking questions and he's asking you thought provoking questions and it might kind of spiral from there and you talking about what lights you up for example me talking about what lit me up in the beginning of my entrepreneurship and making an impact and helping people and serving people and the wins that my clients were having that shit lit him up and made him realize huh i want something like that i want something like that i don't know what that means for me yet but i want something like that and it lit the fire in him and now he's found that So I'm so excited for him to be home and we get to like come live and do our podcast and everything together um, so we can talk about this with you guys. Like there's so much more and I would love to hear more of his thoughts on it. Catherine, I always acknowledge when I'm being conditional or projecting my fears on Jake. Oh my God, so true. That's beautiful. I take a step back and realize I have to take responsibility for my happiness. That means taking responsibility of my fears and conditions. A thousand percent. One of my girlfriends, um, Marissa, and I keep talking about this. And there's a difference between having expectations in a relationship, which can definitely lead to disappointment when you're constantly expecting the other person to do X, Y, Z or be X, Y, Z. And then there's standards. Like here's the standards. Here's where... Like, here's our neutral. Like, this, we don't dip below this. Like, this is the standard of what we expect from each other of having that open, honest communication at the beginning. So it's like, you know, for Joe and I, it's like, I I do want you to text me every day. And he's like, well, I don't fully understand that. And I'm like, well, that's what I need. And he's like, okay, cool. Boom, standard set. He knows that's a standard in our relationship. We keep coming back to that no matter what. But it takes me exactly saying that of taking a step back, taking ownership of my own shit, taking responsibility for my own shit, and then opening up the conversation to say, here's what I need from you so that we're not just expecting and we're not just thinking and we're not projecting onto them. I love that. Okay. Um, let's see here. So number five. Okay. No, wait, number four. Number four is we do not go to bed angry. We don't ever use the D word, meaning divorce, and we have open, honest communication always. So this kind of, these are segueing perfectly. You guys are not, we're on the same wavelength here with all of your guys' comments. I'm loving this. So for Joe and I, we do not go to bed angry. We work through whatever shit we have to work through, even if it means staying up until 4 a.m. when he has to go to work at 6 a.m. the next day. We don't go to bed angry. We might need a break for a second of like, okay, We're going to pause this. Like we both need a breather, take an hour apart, like decompress and then come back to it. If it's not being productive anymore, 
but we do not go to bed angry. Um, we do not go to bed with like this weird thorn in both of our sides. We have to work through it at least to get to like a neutral space. We might not go from like being pissed the fuck off to like, I we're elated and we're like more in love than we've ever been. But we can go from like being the pissed the fuck off to going to like emotional neutral of like, we like each other, we can stand each other right now, but like tomorrow we're coming back and we're figuring out what the greater thing is here that we need to work through. So we don't go to bed angry. We don't ever use the D, the D word, the divorce word. Um, we don't threaten that. We don't use that. We don't be like, well, we might as well just get a divorce or well, well we're just gonna end up divorced anyway. So what the fuck is the point? You know, whatever it might be. We don't speak that way. Um, we do not use that word. We do not even go there. What that does is it creates safety for both of us to know that it's not going there. So even when we're fighting, even when we're having an argument, we both know like our both of our vision and both of our goals is to work through the problem and to work through that sticking point to get to being back to where we were um, or being back to even greater or going forward to even greater. We actually can't ever go back to who we were, but we can move forward into something greater. So knowing that we're both in this for the long haul, we both believe in this marriage now, of course, like that could, there's a million things that could ever happen, but our brains don't go there to think that that's even possible. It's just not an option for us. It's not a possibility for us. So that is something that has been really beautiful for us. And then again, that open, honest communication always between both of us is like, if something's going on with one of us, we have every right to bring it up. We will be met with love and support. There's no judgment and we're going to work through it together. Number five, number five, this is a juicy one. Have a lot of sex and try new things. We both have to initiate, okay? So what I learned, I always thought, oh, sex is for the man to initiate. And when he doesn't initiate, we just don't have sex. And like, that's fine. Like at the beginning of our marriage, I was like, that's fine. I don't really need it. It's cool. Like, whatever. And then his feelings were hurt because I was never initiating. I was never approaching. I was never touching him first and foremost and like going after him, right? So we had a lot of disconnect there. This past year has been insane for my own growth in my own sex life, um, my, my sex with myself, right? Self-pleasure, um, sensuality, femininity, reawakening all of that within me. So I've done a lot of work and taken full ownership in my own self of how I show up to sex completely with him taken out of it. So I've done a lot of work there and I would recommend that for anyone. That's why I'm changing the way that I coach because this has to be talked about because it ripples into everything in your life. So Having a lot of sex and trying new things and both initiating meant me having to figure out how do I need to be confident? What do I need to do to be able to embody this confident woman who owns her sexuality and steps into this and is like, you better believe it. We're fucking doing this. Like it's going down. We're going to have fun. I'm going to show up all in for it. And we were able to grow together in our sex life. We didn't just say, I see this so often and it hurts my heart in every single way of people just saying, oh, we've been together for so long and the sex is fine. Or the sex life is non-existent, but it's fine. It just is how it is. Or I want to have sex, but I don't think he's attracted to me anymore. Or he doesn't touch me anymore. He doesn't look at me anymore. There needs to be open and honest communication here. There has to be open and honest communication here. Too often did Joe and I in the beginning just say like, oh, well, I guess that this just is how it is. I guess it's, you get married and then it, it all goes to hell. It's, it's over, right? And you think that and that's what everyone's telling you. That's what society's telling you. That's what reality shows are telling you. And, and everything's telling you, why would you ever choose to be with one person for the rest of your life when you could be with a bunch of people? And I'm not here to judge however you live and however you have sex and open relationships and whatever floats your boat like you do you. But for us, we have had to have open, honest, vulnerable communication of me saying, listen, this is awkward. What's going on here? We're not happy. And then it took him having vulnerability. And that's why I want your men to watch this too. Him having vulnerability of saying, well, I don't feel confident around you because I was constantly in my masculine. He's like, you're bossing me around. You're controlling all the situations. You're showing up like in this very strong energy. And I don't feel attracted to that. You took my balls. Like, why do I want to have sex with you? You killed my confidence. And I was like, oh my God. And that is why I'm so passionate about the masculine feminine balance and energies work. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, message me and I have something um, for you in that to learn more. But for me, it took honoring my femininity and to, to growing into myself and owning my sexuality, owning my sensuality, initiating sex. If I wanted to have sex, I am going to initiate. 
I am going to show up in that area and I am going to show him that I want him. I'm choosing him. I long to be with him. I desire him. I crave him. And he does the same for me. And it's insane what that's done. But we also try new things. Like we don't just have the same freaking missionary style sex every single time. Try new things. Have fun. Role play. Toys. Music. Candles. Um, positions. Whatever it might be. Try new things. Have fun with it. Sex is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be intimate. It's supposed to be this deep, passionate. And it can even be a spiritual practice. But you have to be committed to the growth in that area. And you can't just say, well, this just is how it is. And sex sucks. And it's what it's whatever. Because you know what that leads to? That leads to cheating. That leads to um, people feeling attracted to other humans. And that comes down to number six with we both take care of ourselves. And yes, I'm even going to say it, and it's not vain. I'm saying this in a very real way. We're physically attracted to each other because we take care of ourselves. Now, do you have to be perfect? Do you have to be a size two? Do you have to have the perfect hair? Do you have to put mascara on every day? Do you have to have the lashes? Do you have to have the perfect teeth, whatever? No, it's not about perfection. It's about we both take pride and take care of ourselves and we do the things that we need to do to feel our best and we're physically attracted to each other more and more every single year. So we work out. We eat healthy. Yes, we still eat shit and we still drink alcohol and we still have fun and whatever. Like we still do the things like we're not perfect by any means, but we're committed to ourselves and being the best that we can be. We, I, I take the sweaty sports bra off some days and I put on a lace bralette. I'm going to have new underwear that don't have holes in them and aren't from like seventh grade, right? I don't have any underwear. That's disgusting. Um, no judgment, but that's really <laughs> I crack myself up. But anyway, you see my point. It was like recently I threw all my gross rat, ratchet underwear out. Like who needs the holy underwear? Get new underwear. It's not that hard. Um, get out of the yoga pants one day and put on a dress, right? Dress yourself up a little bit. Have something you can wear that makes you feel sexy. Uh, for me, I do love having my hair done. I love having good hair. It's something that I'm really passionate about. Maybe former hairstylist again, but it's just something that I love. I do put a little bit of makeup on. Um, I don't go crazy. As you can see, I don't wear lashes every single day. Like I'm not crazy. I just do the things that make me feel sexy and pulled together and good. And I show up in a different way and he's attracted to me. Now, yes, I take all my makeup off before I go to bed. I wake up and I'm all blotchy and my hair's all crazy. And my breath smells bad and I'm, you know, whatever. But it just takes those little teeny tiny things you can do for yourself to pull yourself together and be physically attracted to each other. It's not just letting yourself go and saying, well, like he already married me, he's stuck with me. No, take care of yourself and take care of yourself for you, not even for him. But when you take care of you, it inspires him to take care of himself because men are just mirroring, men are reflecting, right? They're, they're following our lead, they're living life through us, and then we're able to grow together. So I do believe um, physical attraction is something you need, and I think that it's, it breaks my heart when things happen and people cheat and, and people walk away and that. And again, there's always um, deeper meaning there as well. But sometimes it's this physical attraction piece of just you stop caring about yourself. And if you don't care about yourself, why would anybody else care? Right? You have to treat yourself the way that you want others to treat you. So for me, it's not being perfect, but it's showing up for myself every day and asking, how can I honor and love myself? How can I show up fully for myself? And then your man, I promise you, he will mirror that back and he will see that light in you, that turned onness that you have, that confidence that you have, and he'll want to be in your energy. He'll want to be in that. He'll feel attracted to you. It's like a deeper, it's not even just the physical. It's like that deeper inner light that you're turning back on. Catherine says, Jake is always all up on me and always making me feel so beautiful, but he can be so, I can be so embarrassed or feel shy. I know I need to tune into my feminine energy a thousand percent. It's like, how can you get into that receptive energy, that art of receiving that our feminine energy has of saying like, thank you. Right. And, and really owning it, not just being like, Oh, thanks. It's going to take practice, but it's like, thank you. Like, Oh, okay. Okay. And you feel really good. Right. And you're like, okay, I can receive that. I can receive that. And you're picturing it kind of going into your body and it's transmuting. 
and it like lights you up in a new way. Because what happens is if we continue to push it off and we continue to brush it under the rug, they're going to stop doing it because they're going to think it doesn't matter to us. But if we can show them that like, oh, okay, all right, I like that, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And then you, he's watching that pep in your step through the rest of your day. He's going to keep doing it because he's going to want to see that. And he's going to realize he had played a part in that. Cindy says, I'm loving all this distracted by wrangling kittens to comment as much as I'd like. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> I have been there. Catherine, this has been so impactful. That makes my heart so happy. Claire, I am loving my new feminine energy. I used to have such masculine energy. You and me both, girl. It allowed Simon to be the man in which I wanted. Yes, because here is the motherfucking lesson of the motherfucking day, okay? We get so mad and we say, why won't you just be the man? And you know what they want to say back? I can't be because you're being the man. And if he's the man and we're the man, we're going to butt heads and we're going to rival real quick, right? You have to, if you want your man to be the man, you need to be the woman. And this even happens in same-sex relationships. There's one more masculine, there's one more feminine. Same-sex relationships, men and women. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. Okay, uh, Danielle, this is everything, yes. Claire, I'm working on my physical body this year, which I haven't always done before. Me too, new underwear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just one little thing you can do, right? It's just like, how can I honor and love myself today? Not from a place of punishment or judgment, but can I eat a little healthier of a breakfast or can I go on a walk while I listen to the podcast instead of sit on the couch or can I do some booty yoga or whatever can I do today that's going to make me feel really good about myself and in turn he's going to see that in you as well. Oh my God, I love you too. Okay, number seven, final one, okay? So, number seven, number seven, physical touch and intimacy when we're together. So this is more when we're together because again, Joe's gone a lot, um, but when we're together, it's physical touch and intimacy. Intimacy and closeness. You can go to anywhere and see a couple that is intimately connected and a couple that is not. The problem that I see happening is that we become roommates. The longer we're together, we become friends because we're not having intimacy. We're not having that deeper, close connection, that passion, that fire. So you become roommates. And then you're pissed when something when you're like okay well there's no sex anymore but it just is what it is and here's this and whatever and whatever and whatever it's because you're roommates now roommates don't have sex there's a lot of things that um, my friends are amazing for and having sex with them is not one of them the sex is reserved for me and my husband right so how can you show him that you love him through physical touch through intimacy through closeness little things like leaning in when he's talking and being present with him connecting with him being one with him right being interested in him instead of him just always being interested in you and you wanting to be interesting and we do this with clients too like how can you be interested in them when you walk into a room and you're like how was your day and you're actually listening you actually care enough to ask him how his day was and you're listening to it right so intimacy, closeness, lean in when we talk to each other, you know, um, cuddle and, and hold hands. When we go to the grocery store, we hold hands, little things. We hold hands like, right. It's so silly where it, it makes me feel like we're 14 again. Um, it's crazy. We weren't even together when we were 14. So like 17 again, but it's so different because we're, we're still doing these little things. We're touching you know, he'll grab my butt when we're out running errands and it's like, it's like, oh my God, like this is crazy, whatever, you know, um, or I'll go run up behind him and I'll give him a big bear hug or I'll kiss him on the cheek or I'll just like nuzzle up next to him. Like, I'm just like, I'm just obsessed with you. Like I just am close to him. I create intimacy and we touch each other and we have this closeness. Now we still give each other space to do our own thing. Um, I can tend to be needy and obsessive. <laughs> stage five clinger I like to call myself where he'll walk in from work and I'm like babe yeah you're home da, da. and I'll go kiss him and I'll go hug him and then I'll ask him like did you need to like do your own thing for a little bit or did you want to hang out or what does it look like or he'll ask me how much work do you have left for the day um something along those lines and we'll have that conversation and usually we both kind of do our own thing for an hour or so and then we come together and then we spend the evening together but we do the little things and we create intimacy every single day now, when we're gone, we create intimacy in, in different ways, and we're vulnerable with each, with each other, and we have deep conversations. We stare into each other's eyes on FaceTime. It's different, but we do what we can. Um, for us, we do a lot of, like, 
dirty texting and we talk about sex and we talk about like all the things we're excited for when he's going to be home. And, and we just, you know, it's just little things that we can do to create that intimacy and that deeper connection and reignite that passion and that fire over and over and over again. Every single day, we're both committed to it. We're so committed to the growth of our relationship that even in the hard times, we come back even stronger. I kid you not, guys. I'm not lying when I say the sex is getting better. I'm not lying when I'm saying the relationship is getting better. It actually is. I wouldn't go back to newlywed Joe and Olivia ever. We can, you can create a honeymoon phase in any given moment in your relationship. You just have to create it because it's different. Like the oxytocin at the beginning is rushing and it's like the super exciting time and, and all of that. So like that makes sense logically, but now you just have to create that again. Focus on your own happiness, focus on your own wholeness, focus on your own sexuality, your own sexiness, your own self, your own self love. And then I promise you, he's going to mirror that back to you. I promise you, I promise you have open, honest communication about it. Now, does anyone have questions as I go back through these comments? Let's see. Um, Danielle says, I would love info on the feminine masculine concept. I always try to be the man and woman. Um, LOL, struggle is real. Amen. You and me both. Yes. Message me um, so that I make sure to send that over. And I have a bunch of podcasts I've been interviewed on about it. We talk about it on my podcast a little bit. Um, and I also have a program around it as well. Catherine, I'm so fucking happy about this shit. Me too. I'm so happy that you're here. Catherine, why are you crying? You did a crying face. Let's see. Claire, what was number six again? Oh, number six was... We take care of ourselves, physically attracted to each other, work on our own physical bodies. Like we're both so insanely physically attracted to each other. <clears throat> we do that too, but I love it. I know it makes me so happy. I love it. Yay, yay, yay. Cindy says, you grew a human and you're nourishing a human. That's freaking amazing. Your boobies are perfect no matter what. Your boobs are doing the exact thing they're meant to do. Did you know your milk ducts look like a flower? Oh my God, totally. Oh, did you say something about, oh, having babies made my boobs asymmetrical and I'm still nursing and it was a throat punch in my confidence. So I think it's exactly what Cindy said. It's realizing like this is who you are in this season and it's not forever. So own each moment. Know that your husband, it's you finding a way to love yourself, love your boobs where they are now because your husband will love that too. But when we're constantly tearing ourselves apart and thinking we're so ugly and thinking we're so disgusting and like, why would he ever touch me? And why would he be attracted to me? He's not attracted to us. It's a light that we have to turn on in our own self-love and our own self-confidence that the man is attracted to. I kid you not. Joe loves me. I'm not, my physical body right now is not where I want to be one day. Like I'm working on my body every single day. Weight is something I've struggled with my entire life. I have a lot of fucked up patterns in my brain, um, around my body and food and the way that I show up for myself in that area. But the more that I can own it, even when I might have a little extra pudge or my cellulite's pissing me off or my love handles are gross that day or like whatever it might be, my husband is so insanely attracted to me when I am attracted and showing up for myself in like owning it. Like here I am. I'm going to put the lingerie on. I'm going to fucking own it. This is my body right now. This is who I am. But it's an internal light that comes through us. It's like this, this energy when you walk into a room, you owning yourself where you are right now. You gave him a baby. You birthed a human. You're keeping a human alive with your body. That's sexy. That's attractive. That is next level. Like I have heard more men say than not that they're attracted to their woman when she's pregnant and, and how she is as a mom. It like turns them on more. But what happens is the mom judges herself and turns herself off because she's disgusted by herself. And so then that's the energy that starts coming through. And that's what he's going to start mirroring. So how can you start to own it and be like, my boobs are asymmetrical now. This is funny. Okay. I birthed a human. I gave life to a human. I'm nourishing a human. I'm keeping a human alive. And okay, how can we work with this now? How can we work with this? What can I do to feel so freaking good about myself right now? And maybe it's doing a workout like booty yoga. If you guys don't know what booty yoga is, I'm not affiliated in any way, um, but it's B-U-T-I yoga. It's like such a primal, almost like sensual way of moving your body that like gets you back into that feminine flow and that feminine energy. I kid you not. It's insane. It's amazing. Um, and that is something you could do. Like what is something you can do to fall in love with yourself again? Something I've started to do 
take baths and actually have to look at myself. Okay. Nothing is, <laughs> nothing is sexy about laying in a bath with like my knees up and like, I got some rolls going and I'm like, okay, but you know what I've started to do instead of hating myself and avoiding the bath, I'm looking her dead in the face and I get in the bath and I look at myself and I'm like, I can, okay. At first it took me being like, oh my God, I'm disgusting. And now it's getting into like, I can work with this. Okay. Because I know that I'm making decisions every day to work through this physical body and change it and, and own it and, and really get into my body and be so confident. So what I started to do is the baths have helped. But the other thing I've done is I've unfollowed people that make me feel less than, that make me feel not enough, that make me feel like I constantly was catching myself saying, God, I wish I looked like her. I wish I had her abs. I wish I had her ass. I wish I had, you know, her figure. I wish I could be that thin. And I, I that's not a healthy way to look. I started looking at people who were like more like the body positivity while still working on myself. It's not giving me an excuse to be unhealthy of like, oh, well, this just is how it is. I looked at people like Ashley Graham and um, what's her name? Uh, healthy is the new skinny. What's her name? Katie, uh, Katie Wil Wilcox, I think they, um, fit fat and all that too on Instagram. She's so sweet. We had her on the podcast once and they're people who they work out all the time. They make healthy choices. They do things for their body. They move their body. They love their body, but they also own the extra ripple and the extra divot and the extra roll. They love themselves through it, but they still make healthy choices every single day. They're just owning the fact that their bodies are going to look a little bit different than maybe the Fitstagram that's happening where that's a beautiful body. I'm not saying that's not a beautiful body, these thin women. They're gorgeous, they're beautiful. But I can't compare myself to them. There are people that are in that space that are ready for that and there's seasons in my life where I'm so committed to my fitness that that inspires me. But the second I go into comparison, I unfollow because it's not a healthy way to live. And there's other people that they're inspiring. And I don't have to be one of them in this moment. I can be inspired by them, but I don't have to follow them. Does that make sense? Do you guys hear my heart in that? Like no size is perfect. It doesn't matter about being bigger or smaller or littler or anything in between. All of us are beautiful. And I know it's so cliche and it's so cheesy, but it's true. We all have a space, but we have to own it. If you're thin, own it. If you're curvier, own it. You just have to start falling in love with your body and make changes from that space that I don't want to be in this body forever. And I know it's not forever. So I'm going to do good things for my body to feel my best, but I'm going to love my body through the process. No change, no lasting change has ever come from you hating yourself. Right? Own it. Resonate with this. Yes, Claire. Oh my God. I love this. You have to look at booty yoga. You're going to love it. Sadie, thank you for tagging Ashton. I love this. I love this. I love this. Nishana. Yes, yes, yes. So good. Cindy, I hear the masculine and feminine struggle. I'm an August Leo, and he's an August Virgo. Oh, my God. I don't know what that means. Um, astrology is so new to me. I'm still learning it, but um, I'm a Virgo rising. I have a lot of Leo fire, a lot of planets in Leo, too. But I'm also a Cancer sun, and I'm a Taurus moon, I think. Yeah, I've got a lot going on. It's been so fascinating to learn about, though. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yes, yes, yes. Woo-hoo. Awesome. 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 So Catherine, we love you. We think that you're sexy. You got to own the asymmetrical boobs right now. You got to own this. It's going to be amazing. Oh, Heather says sex with kids around. We struggle with that. Um, so I don't have children. So I don't, I, I don't know if anyone here has kids that can speak to this. My, my biggest thing is going to be like, obviously after they go to bed, which I know can be difficult, even if you have to stop mid sex, because here's the thing, sex is not about always like getting to the finishing mark of you both coming. That's not always what it's about. Sex can be a beautiful thing where you're just rolling around together in bed. And if the kid starts crying, you got to get up, but you both were so present and in pleasure and enjoying that connection in that moment that even if you have to stop mid sex, like you can always come back to it. Um, or you just enjoyed that 10 minutes that you had rolling around together, like being so in love and so intimate and so together it can be a beautiful thing. Um, but I also think it's removing the shame around sex. So for example, um, sex is something we're all having it, right? Um, or we all would like to be having it. <clears throat> and I remember thinking that it was like this dirty, dark thing, um, uh, especially as a kid. I remember being very much so in the mindset of like, ew, ew, sex, 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 sex is gross. And like, I still think it's, <laughs> I'm still working on like 
everyone else in the world, I want to help them have sex. But like my parents and my grandparents, like I just go la 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 la. Like meh, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to um, like think about them having sex because it weirds me out, honestly. But that being said, I think it's also removing it. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen if your kids know about sex? right? And if they're not afraid of it, and if they grow up without judgment around it, how different of a growing up um, and, and being in growing up and, and being a, an adult would be like if we're a kid and we start learning about sex, and we know that like, oh, our parents have it, and we're not afraid of it. And we remove the shame from it and the darkness and the dirtiness that we attach to it. How different would that be? So I would definitely say like, have sex whenever you can, or date nights are huge. Go get a hotel a, one weekend a month or something, or one weekend a quarter where you can like fully just be together. But it's prioritizing your relationship with your partner, even before your kids. Now, I know I get a lot of hate for that. I know that it's polarizing. I am not a parent, but this is something my parents taught me that they came first, even before us kids because they were the foundation of which everything else was built. And if it was kids first and the foundation is built from there and your man feels so disconnected from you, nobody's happy. But when mom and dad were happy and when they, they still argued, they still had hard times. They still had things they had to work through. But again, they were committed to themselves as well. They've been married for almost 30 years. Um, and when you look at that, it's like they were the foundation and then us kids got to like, live through that energy and be a part of that energy that rippled from there. And they had to be as gross as it is for me to say about my parents, but they had to be having passionate, deep, intimate, connected sex in order for that to happen. Like it has to be relationship and then kids it has to be, and it has to be self first, self wholeness, happiness, spirituality, like that piece relationship, how you're showing up there then because of the work you're doing on yourself and then how you're showing up for your kids because of the commitments and the priorities that you have. That's what I believe to be true. Let's see. Claire says we have four children. Yeah. If anyone has any advice, feel free to share it. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. The amounts of times we've had to jump off LOL. Exactly. Exactly. Nicely said. I love that. Heather says as a director in pure romance, sex isn't the issue, but it's finding the time. I'm going to lovingly stop you there and say it's about creating the time. It really is about creating the time. Um, if we leave it to chance and we leave it to finding it, it's not going to ever happen. It's not. Um, because it's like the same way that people tell me like, oh, well, once I get here, then I'll do this. Well, once you get there, then it's not like you just get all this time that drops in your lap or all this money that drops in your lap. And then you're like, you know what I think I'm going to do today? This like, it's about creating and prioritizing the time and making it so that that is like number one, like we are going to find the time. We're going to create the time. We're going to put it in the calendar sometimes. And I have friends that have done that where they were so busy. It was such a crazy season of their lives, especially with kids that they had to put it in their calendar. If you guys watch the show Parenthood, it's one of my all-time favorite shows on Netflix, like ball watching every day. It's like the best show ever. Um, I've seen it all like six or seven times through, but uh, they call it Funky Town. Uh, Adam and Christina, they have three kids. They've got crazy lives. Um, one of their kids has Asperger's, so it's like a crazy, crazy, crazy life all the time, and they have it in their joint calendar on their phone that like, bing, on the calendar, it's like Funky Town tonight, and they know that that's what's happening, and it's beautiful. Yes, we created the time. Andy says, literally plan sex. I don't care. A hundred percent. Because when you're in it, you're in it. It's the same thing with your workouts. I don't ever wake up and I'm like, ooh, I want to work out today. It's like, oh, it's on my calendar. 10 a.m. today, I'm working out. Check, done. And it cre you create the passion and the energy and the flow when you're in the moment. It's not just about like checking it off your to-do list like a chore um, with sex, but it is about like, okay, I'm here. Now I might as well be all in while I'm here. And then you get turned on from there. I promise. I've had to do it too. Angie says, I just wrote a blog post I published today. Ooh, share the link with us um, about having more intimate sex. I feel so unqualified to write about it. Your experience is your qualification. I promise you that. Um, but I have the best sex life and I want to be sex positive and I want other people to have good sex. And you are right. We prioritize our sex over our kids and other activities. You have to. Angie, share the fucking blog post. Share it, share it, share it. I'm so excited to read it. Holy freaking moly. That's it. You have the experience. Therefore, you have the qualification to speak on it. It's exactly that. You have kids. 
you and Lee have been together and you guys have great freaking sex. So share it, teach other people. Other people are longing for that. And it's the same reason. That's the same thing I felt about when I stepped into um, sex and, and all of these things and talking about it. I was like, who am I to talk about it? Right. And I was like, I don't have like, blah, 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 blah. And like, well, what about this? And I'm like, no, my experience is my expertise. And I'm, because I'm so passionate about it, I am seeking certifications. For example, I'm in the erotic blueprint coach certification. There's other programs and classes you can take out there as well to continue growing your knowledge base in order to speak on the thing you're speaking on. But it really all comes from if you're feeling called to speak on it, someone needs to hear it every time I share on something because simply it's being channeled through and I'm so pulled to talk about it. It hits home every time. Every single time. Claire says, I need to run. Thank you for a great live. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Well, we're coming up on the hour. Holy freaking moly. I wasn't planning on that. But that being said, I love you guys. I'm rooting for you. These are my seven lessons. I hope that they were helpful. And if you guys have any further questions, you know where to find me. Obviously, Facebook Messenger, website, podcast, Facebook group, all the places, Instagram, Instagram stories, Facebook lives, like, I'm everywhere. You can't escape me. Hello. Um, but if you have questions about it, let me know. I do have a couple coaching consultation spots open next week. If you are interested in more, oh yeah, you shared the blog post. Good. If you are interested in digging more into this one-on-one -on -one in private coaching um, or in a mastermind style, I have both options. Message me. Let me know. I have some fun things coming um, and I will see you guys for another Facebook live next week. So until next time, thank you for being here. Thank you for spending the last hour with me. Thank you for your incredible comments. Thank you for your incredible advice that you guys were so open to sharing in the comments. I love you. I adore you. And I cannot wait to see you guys next week. Have a good day, guys. Bye.